Hello, welcome back. Funny looking hat, Richard. Right, another episode about the stag. Got a lot of really good feedback on the first episode. I hope you enjoy this one as much. If you do, give me a smurfy thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs below. Down. If you want to subscribe to the channel as well, it helps those YouTube algorithms. Sorry about the efforts, folks. It's a little bit of extra revenue for me, beer money and all that. Um, this is the day job. The YouTube stuff is for shits and giggles of your information and entertainment. If you want to support the channel, then there's a PayPal me thing scrolling down here. There is merch. Uh, look in the description below the video on YouTube. Um, if you want to contact me, Church House Classics, it's all one word at gmail.com. Anyway, enjoy the video. That was pretty spicy, that. <laughs> I tell you what, it was spicy. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about brakes. Now, uh, I've just been over, because I was a bit suspicious about some of these flexi lines on the car. Certainly these two at the front here are different types. Um, and quite why you would change one and not both, I don't know. Anyway. Um, if one is knackered, there's a fair chance the other one's going to be knackered. Um, so I don't quite know why that occurred. But anyway, two different types on the front. Uh, the rears, however, are a really good example as to why you need to go to your car to an MOT test station on an annual basis. MOT exemption does not mean that you are exempt from making sure the car is roadworthy. This one here is especially nasty. You can see where... All the coating on that, the, the, the outer coating on that, is actually started to uh, to fail. I suspect that these um, are uh, beyond end of life. Um, I've ordered some new hoses up, and we'll fit those on before I bleed the brakes through. But uh, it's pointless kind of carrying on when you've got that kind of stuff. I mean, I had to take, even take the T piece off the back of the car because I could not get that released in the limited amount of space that was available. Um, I'll be able to do it once it's in the vice. Uh, but I don't think that has ever been kind of, not recently, that has not been off the car. Which is strange because someone's fitted like a complete set of copper brake lines. Some of which are good, some of which are horrible. Um, but it's just all a bit odd really. Anyway, <clears throat> that aside, I mean an MOT tester would have spotted that and said, Oi, change your flexies. And the owner of this car, I don't, uh, well, I don't believe he's hands-on. I believe he just takes it to garages and so forth. People like myself to fix it. Sorry, the boys in the uh, recycler are making a lot of noise today. Now, this is one of those flexes, um, and this end here is very, very, very tight. I might remake this, this piece up. It was a bastard to get it off. Right, so what are we going to do? Uh, we are going to, I think, next, I need to make up a couple of brake lines for the front end of the car. Basically, I don't like copper brake lines. But I think Cunifer is far superior. These are the two brake lines that came off the front. They're a bit of a mess. Um, okay, there's bits of underseal and so forth on them. One of the flares wasn't very good. It was on the driver's side, which would be this one. And I wasn't convinced this flare, you can see it's twisted. I wasn't convinced that flare was actually making um, a good contact. Um, it's also a bit on the thin side. It is a double flare by the looks of things. Um, but it's not the best. So I'll just remake these, uh, remake these pipes up with my phone. Hey, you can see that I've made up a couple of new uh, Cunifer brake lines there to go to the preferred pressure differential switch I've also rebuilt with new seals and put a switch on it unfortunately having dug the cable out someone's mullered the end off it so I'll have to do something creative with that to get it to work on to there now both basically there's two pins in there they both do exactly the same thing um roasted it right the way through to this side over here I've put the old um uh flexi hose on it just to keep crap out of the uh, the end I've done the same on this side here. Uh, back end, um, really the only things I had to do at the back end were um, both of the slave cylinders were not circlipped onto the back plate correctly. So I had to kind of pop those on. Didn't have to dismantle the rear hubs, but I did have to make sure. The problem is if you don't clip 
the uh, sleeve to the back plate, it moves around too much. The danger is that when you press the brakes, it kind of joddles and jiggles and does whatever it needs to do. Um, I've still got, that's the brake line that runs across underneath the boot floor or underneath the rear seat floor. Um, I might make that up out of Kuna for as well. Um, I've got the T-piece, I've managed to separate the, uh, the flexi hose from it. It weren't pretty. There's the flexi hose that come off it. I mean, that's been on there a long time. So, yeah, you guys want to be a little bit careful uh, when it comes to MOT exemption, I think. Because that would have been spotted. Anyway, I've done that. Put this lot away. You can see that <laughs> I've gone back to this style of uh, brake flaring tool again. And the main reason for that was I've got another tool down in Devon. Uh, but I managed to break this one. I mean, I've had this thing yonks, uh, but the fled thread has gone on it. You can see the thread was starting to get tired. I do lube this thing, but that thread through there is just not toughened. Now I'm going to um, get the thread out of it and see if I can make it back up again with a hardened thread. So that's done the front brake line, just waiting for the flexes, and then I can bleed that through. Uh, chassis line I've left as it is. It's, it's, it's secured underneath the car. It is copper. It's well secured. It's not going to vibrate or anything like that. It's just because I had a problem with these. I took them off, and, you know, rather than putting copper back on again, I don't know how old it is. But, but I mean, the, the issue with copper always has been that it, it does work hardened. So it will kind of flex, and then when you bend it back, it doesn't bend back where it bent in the first place um it's strong there's nothing wrong with it just i don't know how how long it's been on the car um and you know if i'm going to make up new unions and these these unions here the reason i made that one up is because the uh, the flats had kind of started to burr over on it and it's just never good for the sake of 45 minutes i'll make up a new pipe just take me half an hour to get this thing off and put it back on again so i might as well make it up new so if you've got copper don't worry about it. Don't panic. If you make it up these brake lines, make them out of Cunifer. Oh, there's a bit of an excitement on my phone down there. Um, right, I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pop this door handle back on. Um, we're coming up towards, what are we? Oh, 20 past four. Look, it's still light. It's still light. <gasps> oh my goodness. It's cold, but it's light. Um, I might give the furnace a quick go in a minute, but uh, I'll probably want to be packing up in about half an hour, head off home, get another video edited, uh, and uh, get myself prepared and ready for gin o'clock, because it is Friday and I've not been drinking all week. Try and boost my immune system. Well, no, the missus has been watching all these TV shows about the COVID and immune systems, and apparently alcohol does not boost your immune system. Now, I... I'm not entirely sure I agree with that, but then I'm no medic. Right. Coffee doesn't boost it either. Probably does, actually. Now, what was I going to do? I was going to do something. Oh, yeah, I was going to put the door handle on. What a pill, okay. Um, now, I've got... Old handle is around somewhere here. Uh, no. I bought it with me. I bought it up to the unit with me this morning. in here it's in here along with there we are SOC spares nice rubber handle or a pair of them because um, I can just keep one in stock oh, oh. I think I just got the SOC spares I think they tra they trade as British car spares on eBay I'll just correct underneath here if that's not correct it might be correct, I don't know. But anyway, that can go on the handle and I can fit the handle back on the door and put the catch inside it. The only thing that didn't arrive is um, my order that came in with the other stag parts. Uh, they weren't able to include the spring on the bar, so I can't put the door trim back, but at least I can get the handle back on it. It's a bit of a faff getting the handle in because <clears throat> it's going to be dark, so I'm not going to bother filming it, which will just be an absolute nutter. Kind of disaster if I did that. So on the back of the handle, the way these things fit in, this is covered in wax. Ugh. 
the way these fit in is they slot there is a slot along the top edge there you can see that and that goes up inside the door frame and then there's two nuts on the bottom there you can see them there and they pinch onto the other side of the door frame down here that one easily accessible this one sort of behind the catch which is just there it is accessible but it's just a fiddle and then once it's all in i need to make sure that i put the clip properly onto the lock ring that'll be part of the uh, the activity and i really don't want to have to this camera's caught on me somehow there we are i really don't want to kind of fiddle and fuck around with that i, I think if you look at my video about door rattles I, I i go into quite a lot of detail there about taking these out and putting them back in again um you can get these now in um this uh, a chrome coated plastic um they're made by the stag owners club tooling fund limited sock toffle um, and you can get them through various suppliers but uh, the plastic coated sorry the, the chrome coated plastic um uh, door handles they're very nice um, when mine are shagged out, I will replace them. You can see these ones have actually got black paint on the inside of them. It's quite smart like that. Right, I'm going to put this on. Right, bled the brakes through. I'm having a little bit of fun with the handbrake on this. Um, and the customer did tell me the handbrake was woeful. So I pulled the, um, the shoe off. Let's go down and look at the shoe. There we are. So this is the shoe with the adjuster on it. You see the problem? Whoever put this together has put the spring the wrong side of the adjuster. And to be honest, it's all a bit fucking wobbly, this lot. So I don't think the adjuster was really doing anything at all. Um, and it was all a bit of a shambles, really. So these things are actually not that difficult. Um, when you get the shoes, more often than not, you'll have to put new adjusters on them. Uh, the problem I've got, I think this pin here is bent. So there's a little C-clip. And then there's a washer. And then there's a spring that we were just playing with just now. So take the spring off. Just laying things out in order they come off. And then we've got the top half of the adjuster. And then we've got this pin. It is straight. It's not very tight though, was it? Then we have got the other adjuster. The bottom half. And look how loose it is. Something's gone wrong here, folks. Something has gone wrong. Let's take that off. And then uh, I think there should, be, there should be washers in here somewhere, I'm sure of it. That circlip doesn't even look like it's attached on there. There's a pin. bent yeah I think that the root cause of the problem with the brakes is down to the adjuster so the little serrated teeth on here little serrated teeth on there and the idea is that they kind of lock together but if they're both free moving and moving all over the shop then it's never really going to do anything at all um, also Got a feeling that bottom circuit wasn't really doing anything. I'm not convinced it was on the right way round. I'll have to get the parts book out to work out what on earth is going on here. It's not something that's going to happen today because I haven't got the parts book with me. But I can soon work it out. I'll get the parts diagram printed down. Then I felt though, if the adjuster works, I just have a feeling it goes that way round. I can't remember exactly. Could well be that it goes that way. But that hole there is where the handbrake lever goes. And what I was finding was when I was pulling on the handbrake lever mechanism on the back plate, uh, it was moving one shoe but not this shoe. So I thought, oh, that's weird. I wonder why. And of course we find out it ain't quite what it should be. The shoe is bonded on properly. I don't know. <clears throat> I'll have to work that one out, won't we? No, I think that is the right way around for it, uh, because obviously the, the, the adjuster needs to circumvent that hole. And it's been a long time since I've looked at stag back brakes. 
Um, but it just comes, it's all a bit wobbly. That pin is a bit wobbly in there. I mean, look at it. This is kind of part of the problem we've got is the pin is about three thou too small for the hole. So it means the adjuster moves around. So <clears throat> I just don't think the adjuster was working properly. Certainly the spring was in the wrong location. The spring was sitting between the top adjuster um, and the teeth, which would have caused, although the adjuster was moving out, it wasn't locking in position uh, because the spring was underneath it, which isn't ideal, is it? Uh, there's bugger all in the manual um, about the adjuster because I think what happened is when you bought the shoes they came with adjusters. Uh, oh, this torch has gone flat. The other thing I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to, have to get the other um, shoe off. It's a pain because... Let me go around over here and I'll show you. I'll show you what a pain it is. Let's get the other torch. Little um, <coughs> LED battery torches. They're very good, but... I need a lead light ready. Oh, oh my goodness, it's like looking at the sun. Oh, here's the other shoe. You can see I zip tied the uh, cylinder together. Now there's a spring down here that holds the handbrake mechanism onto the shoe and then it goes through that hole there. So in order to get that off, I need to lay on the floor, which is always fun. I'll put the torch there so we can roughly see what's going on. Move the lamp over here. Basically, this spring hooks over the end at this end they are a balls I get on and off they really are they're, they're, they're not fun come on you bastard well, the alternative is to take it off this end let me stab my finger now <laughs> Honestly, it's hours and hours and hours of entertainment, folks. All for your benefit. Um, there's the spring from the other side there. Take that off. That wouldn't have helped it. Right, now. Sometimes these springs come off really easily, and sometimes they don't. This spring looks massacred under here. I think it's worthwhile taking this whole bloody thing apart, to be honest. I think someone has been in here and it's not perfect. And when it comes to brakes, you really don't want to be pissing around with brakes. There we are, this spring is off. Now I can pull the spring out and you can see what I mean by it being massacred. Come on, you bastard. It's quite tight, Axis. In there. Right, then the shoe comes off. Hold the handbrake mechanism in place, and then the handbrake mechanism comes through. This is bent, this handbrake mechanism. This is bent. I'm wondering if this is what the problem is. Now, I have managed to get these out before now without taking the bloody wheel cylinder off but in this case how weird I'm sure I've had these things it's because it's big right, basically look you see that that's why the lever now isn't able because this lever needs to come further around here in order to come out of the uh, out of the hub, um, I think we're into a parts supply situation here. We're going to have to see if we can get another one. Oh, for fuck's sake! You see why? There, down there, that that notch is where it sits into the brake shoe. I've had to put a blob of welding on the before now, but that's looking. A bit more perilous. Covered in dust. Well, now I'm going to, have to pull the other side apart as well. 
because I hadn't anticipated this level of bodge. I don't need bodge, it's just a breakage, isn't it? I suspect what's happened is there it goes. Now, now I've squeezed that together, now you can see it comes through. Right, this is the the lever, which is also bent. Like I say, I've never seen it bent before. I'm going to have to investigate. That's a fair amount of play in there. But you will notice that it does go right the way round, which is what I would expect. This one, it doesn't, because you can see it clashes. I think we're up to a... Bastard thing. So, side by side, because I'm probably not making good sense here. This is one of the levers. So basically the idea is this lever goes like that on the brake back plate. One shoe attaches onto here, one shoe attaches onto there. When you pull on the handbrake lever, it does that. It pushes the shoes outwards. So this slides across, pushes that shoe that way, and that lever there pushes this shoe this way. Sometimes in the past I've had to just put a blob of weld in there. This one, this came from the uh, passenger side when I rotate it look how loose that rivet is the pivot point here this one it didn't even rotate it can't go right way round there's something has gone wrong in here big time now this bend here I think is actually to accommodate the spring uh, and one of my uh, kind of uh, fellow stag chappies has confirmed that but this thing should rotate all the way around and it done not easily anyway and i think this is why i think partly this is why uh, we've got a problem with the handbrake on this car but also um we have the problem with the adjust with the adjuster and you can see how much play there is if i bring this over here that's, that's, that's with it pinned and clipped into place. Now I know the spring goes on top of it, but I've never seen them that wobbly before. It's almost like, you know, holes too big in the, in the brake shoe. I don't know. I really don't know. <clears throat> now, clear your throat before you hit the record button, Richard. Right, stag, fuel filler. Um, this one, don't lock. Um, and the customer's asked me to see if I can fix that. There's a couple of issues. First and foremost, the... Um, I can't unlock it now, because there's no bloody spring on the inside of it. There we are. Right, now, the problem I've got here is that the plunger has come off the inside, because someone's been at it, taking it all apart, probably because it wasn't locking, um, and then hasn't quite managed to put it back together properly. That's um, the least of my worries. There is a spring that goes on there as well. Um, and the spring really just pushes the plunger down, which seals the neck of the fuel filler. The second thing I found was the whole breather system um, is just venting into the boot. Um, so I don't know, uh, Cameron, if your car stank of fuel when you were kind of driving it or filling it up or whatever, but that should have a small pipe on it um, and then ultimately goes through to a, um, a oh, brain gone blank, brain gone blank, uh, to a fuel filter. So I need to get that sorted out for you, because that's not right. Um, but, watch. The key actually works in the lock, right? So, and when the key turns, it does actually turn the little nodule there. Because the nodule, when the nodule, take the key out, there's a little pin on there. I don't know if you can see that. Little pin goes up against that, and it means that that bar there cannot be bypassed because uh, the ratchet the bar won't fit between those two now I can see the part is worn but that's not a horrendous problem because sometimes you just bend the bar a tiny bit now interestingly it does lock um, and holds locked if you position it up to one end so let me, let me demonstrate rather than being quite so cat handed <clears throat> What I need is I just need a friendly flat blade screwdriver. Don't worry, I'm not going to go berserk with this thing. We've got the key. Key's gone in. So we're in an unlock mode at the moment. <clears throat> and we push the lock 
that way as much as we can. Push the, the, the whole kind of um, uh, mechanism that way. And now, I can feel it's locked. So it has locked. So then we look at the pivot pin here. It's the pivot pin for the top. How much movement do you want in now? How much movement do you want in now? So I'm going to drive the roll pin out and I'm going to see what I can do because they, they, they are supposed to move to a certain extent but I think that's moving further than it's designed to. Um, I will have a look. Um, first and foremost I wanted to fix this which is why the whole thing came off. Then I'll try bending the bar a little bit and we'll see if that fixes it. Um, uh, but then after that, <coughs> I don't know. We'll see. Right now, spring goes on. Plunger. So this plunger shouldn't really have come off. I don't know how on earth that has happened. Let me, um, I've got supplies in. Let me pull this roll pin out. Of course, it's not going to come out, is it? No, no that's seized in. Been out and bought a battery. Just have my nose bag for me lunch. Um, and then I popped home to have a look at my stag, which is sitting there slumbering in the garage uh, with a oil-free diff. <coughs> and one, a couple of things I noticed. First and foremost, on mine, my fuel filler cap, which is actually, um, I put it, it's when you can still get them new. And I'm pretty sure I bought a new old stock fuel filler cap uh, for my car, and it would have been about 26, 27 years ago. I fitted it, but I don't have any of this plate on mine. Now, the other thing I noticed on mine, in here, you see that pin? You might be able to see it, I don't know. Oh, there's a little spider. Bugger off. Um, <clears throat> there's a little pin there. Now, that pin is, it is quite worn. Um, I'm going to knock this uh, little kind of... Uh, washer it's like a c-clip on there and then the lock mechanism should come out of the uh, the barrel i don't really want to start to dismantle this thing any further than i have to um but i want to see if there's any way perhaps i might be able to just replace that post on there again drill it out arrow die a lump of pop rivet or something in there so i find something that's a similar sort of diameter i super glue it in it might work it might be easier than working on this piece over here uh, we've only put about, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes into this so far, so uh, we're still cheaper than a, a replacement unit. But the problem is a replacement unit is still going to have the same level of pitting on it, um, and it's going to need the key changing over anyway. That's not a pleasant little gift, Richard. Not a pleasant little gift. I might actually need the light on this. It's this. It's actually on its way out. I can see. I can see. See, once the sea clip is out, the lock should be out. That's the sea clip. Goes like that. Really, you want to go into the lock before you pull it out. Otherwise, what will happen is all the levers will just go flying absolutely bloody everywhere. And then you'll curse. That's the lock barrel you see all the levers go in there but when i pull the lock the key out these levers should all pop out they don't so i might have to put a bit of releasing agent on that I'll loosen that up this is not graphite shit. fast release penetrant so that's so for a minute it feels like they're best getting better i can feel the levers moving around inside here now Leaves are just literally, they're just like little brass, um, uh, uh, kind of, well, levers, <laughs> for want of a better word, Richard, um, and the key goes through the middle of them, and then it pulls them against a spring, and then they all level out. So when you take the key out, you can see some of the levers are pointing in opposite directions, but not a lot of them. It really is not a good order to so, Probably... 50 plus years old and you can see here as I push the key in you can see the levers dancing up and down as because obviously the key goes through 
the thing is, I would expect those levers to actually pop them up. But they're actually starting to actually do what they should be doing. You see now, as I pull the key out, you can see all the, the well, half of the levers now are coming out. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. I don't want to get into the realms of taking the whole bloody thing apart. There's enough there for the lock to actually lock. Let's just try and get the catch needs to go down behind it. be just about enough. We've refitted it, let's see if the blimmin' thing works. So first and foremost, it's in the locked position at the moment, excuse the light, and it doesn't open. And we put the key in, turn the key to the unlock position, and it opens. And it doesn't open. I think that's as good as that's going to get. Now, what I was saying on the inside here, let me just see if I can get the camera into the boot. Now, on the inside, we've got the filler neck here that goes down into the tank. And that little T piece or the little angled section is up here. And it should then go through a breather, a fuel breather, which sits up there um, and then goes down underneath the boot floor. So I'm a bit concerned as to why that's completely missing because basically the tank, the fuel tank, is venting into the boot area. I'll talk to the customer about that, but uh, relatively easy to reinstate. It's just a shame it's not there. Ah, hello, boys. Right, radio's on. How about that?